meditation for him. And uh, our next speaker is, is, is a young man who he, he likes to say he's, he's, he's found his calling to help people flourish. And uh, amazing, amazing guy who's a, a life coach, he's a facilitator, and he focuses specifically on mindfulness. And I'm really looking forward to what he has to say. Patrick Madden, please take the stage. Good evening. Hi, I'm Patrick Madden. I'm a mindfulness trainer. I've been practicing mindfulness for about eight years. I've only got six minutes and 40 seconds, as you know. So I'm going to be moving pretty fast. Like probably 90% of you, I think, I work in an information economy. That is, I take information, I repurpose it, I combine it with other information, and I put it out there in a way that's meaningful for people. And one of the things that I've asked myself is, in an information economy, what is the fundamental source of productive power? So ask yourself that for a second, what do you think? What is it that we can cultivate that will help us to work with information better, and without which we cannot work with information at all? For me, and I think for you, the answer is also focused human attention. To work with information, we need to be able to pay attention to what's important for as long as it takes without distraction. If we can do that, then we can work optimally. If we can't do that, we can't work at all. So for me, the alpha and the omega of productivity in this information economy, and I think you join me in that economy, is focused human attention. The next question then is, how present are we on a daily basis? Put your hands up if you can identify with John here to some degree. It's a fair bet that John's not going to be very good at what he's doing, whether it's working, whether it's playing golf or making love to, hopefully, his wife. And he's not going to enjoy it that much either because he's not actually present. He's distracted. And so are we. Don't be distracted by the sign. It's only a distraction. What you need to pay attention to is what I'm saying. But I think you'll find that a lot of your working life is like this. If you're like me, then it certainly is. Distractions are everywhere, from Facebook to Twitter to our mobile phones to office workers who just want to have a chat. They all prevent us from paying attention to what's important and actually doing our job. To make matters worse, we're encouraged to do stupid things, like this guy in the bottom left corner. We're encouraged to multitask. Multitasking means, in terms of attention, that we're shifting our attention constantly from one task to the next, to the next, to the next, and doing that repeatedly without ever completing any of them. It's a dumb thing to do, and it's just a waste of our mental resources. So if you put all of this together, you get the total cost of fuck, and it leads to the modern lifestyle disease, which is chronic stress. Chronic stress is not just some mental phenomenon we can choose to ignore. It's associated with heart disease, with diabetes, with obesity, with asthma, uh, with Alzheimer's even, with premature aging, and with premature death. It's not something we can afford to ignore. So that's the first half of my presentation. Done. Bang. Gone. And the upshot is life can be hard. We need to be prepared. I've outlined the challenges. Now I'm going to tell you about the solution, which I think is mindfulness. So to learn about that, you're going to, continue to, you're going to need to continue to give me the focused human attention that you've been giving me so far. I'm going to tell you a bit about your brain. This is a neuron. It's not exactly what a neuron looks like, but it's pretty. And uh, your brain has 85 million of these. Your brain weighs 5% of your total body mass and uses 25% of all its glucose and oxygen. It's an amazing organ, and it has one other additional property, which is called neuroplasticity. That means it reshapes itself, literally, physically, in response to your experience. If you spend a lot of time getting angry, you'll find it easier and easier to get angry. The same thing goes for being kind, for being generous, for being distracted, or for being present. The upshot is our brains are programmable, and we can be the programmers. But in order to be the programmers, we need to know where we're placing our attention. That means we need to be present. Now this phenomenon of neuroplasticity People often say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That is bullshit. When it comes to neuroplasticity, it starts at birth, it ends at death. It does not stop at physiological maturity. You are potential. You can shape yourself and shape your destiny, or at least your mental destiny, in the way that you choose. You just need the reliable tools. And mindfulness is the tool. This is not your typical image of mindfulness, but I chose it because it illustrates two aspects of the process which are critical. One is relaxation. This woman's very relaxed. <laughs> The idea is that it's actually a pleasure. It's actually a pleasure to let go and drop into present moment experience. She's not asleep, I hope. She's alert but relaxed. So, mindfulness in its modern incarnation comes from two distinct sources. The first 
is the Eastern contemplative tradition, which dates back more than two and a half thousand years. It predates any of today's major religions, including Buddhism, which is, which is often associated with mindfulness. Mindfulness is actually a completely secular practice. It can be done by anyone of any religion or no religion. So it's undergone two and a half thousand years of testing in that tradition. And the second tradition is the Western empirical tradition, otherwise known as science. Two and a half thousand research projects have been done on mindfulness, and that was a figure five years ago. There have been a lot more since. So the fact that mindfulness works, and its, its proven benefits are not a matter of opinion, they're a matter of fact. This is something that science has shown, and a two and a half thousand year old spiritual tradition has shown. These are some of the proven benefits of mindfulness. Less stress, increased empathy, better sleep quality, you can read them. <laughs> I put them in a pill so that you can ask yourself, if there was a prescription pill that you could take that would give you all of these benefits with no side effects, how much would you pay for that? I pay a fair amount myself, but that's speaking for myself. So we've all had occasions where we've dropped into the zone, where we've been completely focused, where we've seen things in tremendous detail, and we felt at one with the flow of our experience. Temporary, fleeting states, very powerful, very pleasant, and very effective. Temporary, but with practice, and that's critical, with practice, they can become, we can enter those states whenever we choose. These are some of the organizations internationally that are choosing to do that practice. The reason why I'm doing this presentation is because I found that South Africa is way behind in its thinking about mindfulness, and we, this is something we should all be practicing. So that's mainly my motivation for this. These are leading organizations who are using mindfulness to combat stress, to increase productivity, and to cultivate in their employees the self-awareness necessary to become effective leaders. One of the things that I want to do is bring mindfulness into schools. There's absolutely no reason why people as young as five can't cultivate this skill. We all have it, we can all cultivate it. The younger we give people the ability to take control of their attention and realize that they can develop their minds in the way they want, the more we'll empower them to, to shape their lives and their worlds. This is my second last slide. I wanted to say this because there is no way to mindfulness. Mindfulness is now. If you're aware of the feeling of your bum on the seat, if you're aware of the feeling of the breath going in and out of your lungs, then you are mindful. It's about being here and now. Don't put it off. It's now. And that's all for me for the moment. Thank you very much for the gift of your focus to me. Thank you. my email address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.